Hey, you know what I was thinking about? If Thanos had apparently balanced other planets like Gamora's home planet before the snap, then after the snap, he technically balanced it again, which would have actually unbalanced Gamora's home planet and therefore voided his entire grand plan. Thanos is a hypocritical moron who actually just wanted to kill people. Discuss. Welcome to Legendary Africa, the podcast where a disembodied voice speaks about African myths, legends, and folklore straight into your ear canal. For my sake, please, clean your ears. So I was reading an article yesterday, which was actually written last year, so I'm just really bad at keeping up with the news. Don't judge me. This article claims that Africa, the second largest frickin' continent on the Earth, is breaking into two. I know! Geologists believe that this rift which appeared in Kenya is slowly growing due to a number of natural factors, including rainfall and what the article calls an underlying superheated crest, which may eventually result in the continent being divided along the eastern periphery of Africa. How absolutely ball and nuts is that? Of course it'll take like millions of years for the rift to broaden and actually break the continent into two, but science, guys! Yes, science! On a more personal note, I want to thank everyone who is listening to this pod and supporting it on social media and on YouTube. I've received so much support and love and gotten such lovely messages recently. I really am very grateful. So I wanted to give a shout out to all my listeners who are from so many different amazing countries. We've got the peeps from the United States of America, my beautiful brothers and sisters from South Africa, the wonderful lads and ladies from the United Kingdom, my mates from Canada, the great Irish people, the brilliant Australians, my friends from Germany, New Zealand, Japan, Algeria, Argentina, the United Arab Emirates, Brazil, Kenya, Spain, Czechia, I think that's how you say it, Russia, Sweden, South Korea, Namibia, India, what's up my ancestors, Taiwan, Mexico, Philippines, Denmark, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Costa Rica, Israel, and Austria. Shoo! Sure. That's 30 freaking countries, holy guacamole. Thank you so much for listening. Michelle would be so happy to know that you are all enjoying our story so much. Before I get on with the story, I just wanted to read out some beautiful reviews that people have been leaving. So from our uh, American listeners, we've got, and they say, great hosts, incredible podcasts with super engaging hosts. Loved listening to the episodes thus far and can't wait to hear more. Thank you so much. Um, it's just me, so I hope that it's still as engaging as before. Uh, another person says, lovely stories, great, interesting podcast with unique content. I enjoyed learning about stories based on another country. I will definitely be telling my son about the Ninky Nanka if he acts up from now on. <laughs> uh, just subscribe and listen, you won't regret it. Heather from Bring the Mio podcast. Another user says, so entertaining. I'm a guy who loves mythology but really didn't know much about African mythology prior to listening to this pod. But I must say, this is a must listen. I've learned so much and it's highly entertaining. Another person says this podcast is delightful and brings an African perspective to all things fun and spooky. I'm still trying to wrap my brain around the laughter epidemic in Tanzania. I look forward to checking out their back catalogue and following on future episodes. Subscribe and listen now. And they say much love to the Shira and Rishali. Thank you so much, guys. Shali would have loved that. Um, I have a new comment from a, a British listener. And uh, they say, it says it in the title. This podcast is legendary. <laughs> Thank you so much. Charlotte would be so happy to hear all that. I know she's really, really pleased about it. So today's story is called Matikatika and is a tale from the Tsonga people of Southern Africa. So the Tsonga people originate from Central and East Africa, somewhere between 200 and 500 AD, and moved mainly into Southern Mozambique and to the Limpopo and Mpumalanga provinces of South Africa. But like right now, they're chilling out throughout South Africa and internationally as well. They migrated in and out of South Africa over a period of a thousand years, and there were individual migrations throughout that time. For instance, the Tembe people settled in the southern parts of Eswatini, that is Swaziland, around the 1350s, and the Vanwanati and Vanyayi settled in the eastern Limpopo region between the late 1400s and 1650s. The language of the Tsonga people is called Shitonga, and is one of the 11 official languages of South Africa. 
The story of Matikatika begins at some point in a history, in a hot, hot place, and in a small, small hut, where a husband and wife lived amongst beautiful greenery. They lived very happily together for several years, until the wife fell very ill. She could not stomach any food, even the mouth-watering sweet fruits her husband would bring her. Eventually despairing, her husband begged her to tell him what she could possibly eat. She thought long about it, and eventually told him that she could maybe stomach some honey. The husband immediately rushed off and brought back a wooden bowl full of honey, but his wife turned her nose up at it. Pushing it away, she claimed that there were dead bees in the honey. So he tossed the honey out into the grass and went to get more. He came back soon with another bowl, but his wife again pushed it away, this time claiming that there was mud in it. Again, her husband went off for more honey, but again, his wife said she couldn't eat it because there were ants in it. So the poor hubby went off once again and brought back another bowl, which his wife finally ate. Then she begged him for some water to wash the honey down with. The husband walked and walked and he walked until he came to a large lake where the water was sugary sweet. He filled up the bowl and walked all the way back to his wife, careful to prevent ants and mud from getting into it. She eagerly drank it and felt much better. Then the husband lay down on his bed and declared loudly that it was her turn now to do all the running about because she had made him very thirsty and tired. So off she went, walking and walking until she came to the nearest spring. Her husband, however, screwed his face up with disgust and pushed the bowl away. He couldn't drink that, he claimed, since the spring is full of toads. So she walked further to another lake. This time the water tasted like rushes. So again, she walked further and further away and brought back a nice full bowl of water. This time he complained that it was full of water lilies. The wife, thoroughly fed up at this point, but reluctant to complain giving his earlier caring treatment of her, went off once again. Finally, she found a lake with water as sweet as honey and knelt down to gather the water. As she leaned over the water, a large, ugly, horned head popped out of the water and glared at her with large, yellow eyes. It was an ogre, and it was angry. The problem with you humans, it said, is that you slobber over anything and everything which isn't yours. This is my lake you're stealing from. The woman paled and clasped her hands together. Uh, <clears throat> my husband said me. It's not my fault, it's his fault. We had to go throwing a husband on the bus, lady. But I will make it up to you by giving you my son, if you let me live. Sure. First this husband gets thrown out of the bus, then the son is thrown to the ogre's mouth. This woman ain't playing, eh? The ogre thought long and hard about this. Finally it asked, How am I supposed to know that the boy you give me is your son? The woman quickly answered, I will shave the sides of his head, hang white beads around his neck, and when you come to our hut, just call out his name, Motikatika, and he will run out, and then you can eat him. Eventually the ogre agreed and released the woman who ran home and practically threw the bowl of water onto her husband's head. She then told him everything which had happened, but he didn't really seem to give a shit. Unfortunately for her, her son was secretly a magician, yet a wizard, Motikatika, and so had magically found out what his mother had done. Rubbing his hands gleefully together, he hatched a plan to outwit his murderous mother. The next morning, Mati Katika let his mother shave his head and hang the beads around his neck, pretending not to know what she was planning. His mother told him to stay at home while she went to work in the fields, and to be careful for any monsters which may come to eat him. Low blow, ma, low blow. When his mother had left, Mati Katika brought his pouch of magic bones and shook them out onto the floor. He placed them in a row, a small one, a bigger one, another bigger one, and a very big one. Me, murderous mother, who the fuck cares father, and Trek, he said, listing the bones in front of him. Okay, look, I may have altered them much slightly, but you get what I'm saying. He then asked the bones what he must do, and they told him to gather all the other children, shave their heads, and hang white beads around their necks, and tell them that if anyone comes calling for Matikatika, that they must all run out and answer. Soon enough, Shrek, uh, <clears throat> I mean, the ogre, came into the village and called out for Matikatika. All the children came running, and soon the ogre found himself surrounded by shaved, bead-wearing kids. Uh, does anyone know where Matikatika is? The ogre asked in confusion. We're all Matikatika, the children shouted, which is actually super creepy and gave me serious Avatar Lost Airbender vibes. We are all Judy. 
So the ogre scratched his head and puzzled over it because, unlike Monte Katika's mother, he was a decent dude who didn't just eat people without good reason. So he sat there until the woman came home and complained that there were too many Monte Katikas. So the woman called out to her son, hoping that he would listen to her. But once again, he used his magic powers and turned into a mouse, because the bones told him to. I also want magic bones which get me out of sticky situations, please and thank you. So his mother told the ogre to wait in the fields tomorrow for Matika Tika, whom she will send to pick some beans. The next day, as Matika Tika was heading to the field, he brought his best friends, Dem Bones, and asked them again how to escape. Change into a bird, they said. So he did, and the ogre chased him away, thinking he was just a little bean-stealing sparrow. The ogre returned angrily to the woman, and she calmed him down by telling him that he must return in the evening while he'll find Matika Tika sleeping under a white blanket. Once again, the bones saved the day. Following their advice, Matikatika swapped his blanket with his father's, and so the ogre grabbed the father and faced it outside of the hut. His mother soon came weeping out of her room, but the son simply shrugged and said, He was the one you sent for water, Mama, not I, so he should have been eaten. And honestly, I can't shake that logic. That's the tale of Matikatika, the magician boy with really shitty parents. The moral of the story really is, don't get married because it makes you walk way, way too much. I ain't got time for that level of exercise. Mm -mm. My sources were the mythology and folklore on textbook from the mythfolklore.blogspot.com site and of course, my faithful friend and everlasting companion, Wikipedia. Before I say goodbye, I've got a great promo clip from Mission Spooky Podcast. Enjoy! Hi, this is JC, host of Mission Spooky. And this is Kiki. Join us every other Tuesday as we teach you about historical sites in Pennsylvania and surrounding states. And we talk about paranormal subjects like ghosts, shadow people, magic, and cryptids. We also choose some of the more peculiar places and events of Pennsylvania to discuss as well. So please join us for some strange fun. And historical subjects wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And that wraps up today's episode. Thank you for listening and joining me today. Hope you enjoyed it. I actually did enjoy it quite a bit, and I think Charlie's probably laughing about it somewhere. Remember to subscribe to Legendary Africa wherever you listen. iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Cosbox, wherever. And share it with your friends, family, and assorted pets. Remember, dogs like podcasts too. We also have a YouTube channel. Go check it out. I update it reg- uh, regularly with podcast episodes and hopefully other random stuff coming soon. Check us out at, at LegendaryPod on Instagram and at LegendaryPod1 on Twitter. Also pop me an email um, about, I don't know, how your day is going, what your garden looks like, how your dogs. I love hearing about dogs. If you want to send me pictures about your dog, do it. Just do it. So send that to StayLegendaryPod at gmail.com. I'll see you next Saturday with an all-new ancient myth, legend, or folktale from our beautiful continent of Africa. Until then... Tell your loved ones you love them, thank the angel on your shoulder, stay safe, stay sexy, and stay legendary. Bye!